American Riviera Orchard. Megan, Duchess of Sussex, embarks on a lifestyle venture rooted in the Santa Barbara's heritage. In a serene blend of elegance and cultural homage, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, has unveiled her newest entrepreneurial venture, American Riviera Orchard, a lifestyle brand that pays tribute to the rich heritage and scenic beauty of Santa Barbara, California. Known for its resemblance to the Mediterranean with its idyllic climate, lush landscapes, and exquisite culinary scene, Santa Barbara has long been heralded as the American Riviera. It is from this picturesque setting, now home to Meghan and Prince Harry, that the Duchess draws inspiration for her latest project. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. A warm welcome to you. May your day be filled with joy and thank you for choosing to spend part of your time with us. Please consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber yet. Do remember to turn your notification on. Click on the thumbs up and leave a comment. This helps us or help the channel with the ever so famous algorithm. A reminder. Your comment will be deleted if it's not appropriate for this channel. And in case you haven't realized yet, this channel supports the mission and vision of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan. So if you're not part of that movement, thank you very much for being here, but no need to leave a comment. Launched with a surprise announcement on Instagram on March 14th, American Riviera Orchard is poised to offer a sophisticated exploration of home, garden, culinary arts, and a lifestyle that mirrors that relaxed yet refined essence of Montecito. The coastal neighborhood the royal couple has embraced since relocating in 2020. A captivating video montage shared on the brand's Instagram story featuring Megan amidst activities like flower picking, cooking, and donning a ball gown, all set to Nancy Wilson's melodicious I Wish You Love, offers a sneak peek into the Duchess' vision for the brand. The Instagram page for the American Riviera Orchid, which has quickly captivated over half a million followers, introduces the venture with a simple yet profound statement by Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, established in 2024. Accompanied by a, com a composite image of the brand's logo and name penned in elegant flowing script with Montecito subtly noted underneath. It sets a tone of sophistication and rootedness in the local culture and history. Further, extending an invitation to be part of this exciting journey. 
The brand's website echoes the information found on Instagram, with the addition of an opportunity to join a waiting list for early access to upcoming content and product launches. Envisioned to embody the Duchess appreciation for home, garden, and a gastronomical adventure, American Riviera Orchard aims to offer a curated selection of home goods, including cookbooks, kitchenware, and gourmet food items, all reflective of Santa Barbara's renowned agriculture and vinicultural richness. Lots of wine. American Riviera Orchard stands as a testament to Megan's innovative vision and her commitment to intertwining the cultural heritage and natural beauty of Santa Barbara with contemporary lifestyle trends. It invites a global audience to embrace the serene elegance and rich history of the American Riviera, promising a journey of discovery and inspiration rooted in the Duchess's home. And now for your knowledge, the term American Riviera is used to describe Santa Barbara due to its Spanish style architecture, Mediterranean climate, coastal beauty and rich heritage. The name likely originated from the term Hollywood Riviera used in 1927 to describe an area south of Redundant Beach. Santa Barbara's Spanish colonial revival architecture established in 1782 contributes to its designation as the American Riviera. The coastal city offers oceanfront views, film festivals, and a vibrant wine scene embodying the essence of a variant of a Riviera with an American twist. The Americans love a conspiracy theory, and as a, an elected kingship themselves, they love a bit of royal gossip. So this is about Britain's image projected on the stage, cast through the prism of monarchy. We expect our royal family to be above the grubby politicians. And the Queen did that quite brilliantly. I mean, she had her ditch, she had her bad moments. But on the whole, there was this idea that something was above politics, that they had to bend their knee to her. And the problem is when uh, the one of the leading palaces, Kensington Palace, the bright, brave new face of monarchy, which is what Kate and William are, put something out there that cannot be trusted, then arguably they're playing at no better a level than the politicians. And already, because they're part of the culture wars now, courtesy of the whole kind of divide between um, Harry and William, exacerbated by the way the press narrate those two narratives, this means that they no longer pull us above our political differences. And if the royal family don't serve as this impartial place or patriotic space above politics, then please tell me, what is their main function? Catherine. There is so much criticism of Meghan, whatever she does and whenever she opens her mouth. And I think we should be aware of that. You know, we've um, 
we've trying, we're trying to say that we should lay off uh, Catherine, that we should be kind towards Catherine after a small mistake. Well, we can't have dual standards and be so critical of everything Meghan does and then demand kindness for Catherine. It is absolutely fascinating to me how now some people all of a sudden are realizing that either they've got consciousness or that what they have been doing to Megan is not fair, is not right, it's not healthy. It's racist also, right? It's abusive. So I've been, let me tell you folks, I, this podcast, by the way, was supposed to be up yesterday and I made, once again, big mistake. I went on the social media. Um, I'm sure you can guess which one. And it was just, endless scrolling and reading things and like watching videos and stuff and whatever is happening with Kate or whatever the situation is look I really hope that she's okay and I really hope that things will be okay for her right I've said this before I don't engage in certain rhetoric and stuff in regards to um, people in general that doesn't mean I don't criticize it doesn't mean I don't um, hold them accountable for things that I I perceive that they that they're actually doing that's not right but I'm very mindful to to be careful with all of that but some of the, the some some of the sort of theories that are out there I mean, I don't mean to say anything, but some of it actually makes sense, right? And I guess that's the purpose of conspiracy theory sometimes is that, you know, they present it to you so it makes sense, right? Or it, it, um, you, you can see how these things can possibly happen. Whatever it is, whatever news they're going to announce, um, look, the monarchy is going to survive one way or another. And... It's just, I guess, in what form, in what way. But I think people need to start... um, Well, the ones that, you know, were in denial all this time. I really hope that they, they walk out out of that denial and start to really do some soul searching, right? Anyways... So, you know, pigs, pigs were flying, as you saw a couple of minutes ago, because I, I, I'm listening, I'm going, did, did she just said that? And there's a few other, you know, these royal experts and commentators, um, Rhoda, Rotten, Rotten, Rota, Rot, Rotonda, whatever, you know, I, I, I just can't pronounce that, that word, you know. So one of the things that, as you saw in a sort of headline, news there that has been disturbing me well it's been disturbing me for a long time I just I just didn't know I mean I talk about it but I I, I wanted to find a way to kind of say it uh, and I I, I, I recorded uh, before this part that, 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 that I'm doing now what I would consider a rant basically talking about leave Megan alone, right? I may still post it, I'm not sure. But after I listened to it, I thought, well, why don't you just sit down and write something with purpose? And um, so I took the time and I did that. So here we go. In a recent turn of events that has left royal watchers and the media in a state of bewilderment, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, finds herself unjustly entangled in a public relations conundrum, not of her making. The epicenter of this storm, 
a seemingly innocent Mother's Day post by the Prince and Princess of Wales that spiral into controversy due to an alleged digital alteration of a family photograph. I'm just saying alleged, just, I mean, we know it's, it's, it, it happened. They altered the picture, but I'm just trying to protect this channel. A rare misstep acknowledged by Kate Middleton herself, steaming from her experimentation with photo editing. This incident has catalyzed a fury of speculation and debate, shedding light on the precarious nature of public perception and the relentless scrutiny faced by members of the royal family. Yet, it's the redirection of the spotlight towards Meghan Markle that underscores a pervasive and unsettling narrative within the royal discourse. The call for Meghan to publicly support Kate Middleton in this moment of vulnerability, a plea amplified by certain segments of the media and some public relations professionals, overlooks a complex history marred by tension, misunderstandings, and the palpable weight of the past and with past grievances. This insistence not only disregards the Duchess of Sussex's own turbulent journey within the royal framework, but it also perpetrates a troubling expectation that Meghan, despite the myriad of challenges and personal trials she has encountered, should rise to defend Kate Middleton, thereby absolving the institution of its shortcomings. Such demands are emblematic of a broader societal tendency to place undue responsibility on women, and particularly on women of color, to mend fractures and to smooth tensions, often at the expense of their well-being and without regard for their personal experiences of injustice. It's a narrative that Megan, through her candid revelations about her time within the royal family, has sought to dismantle, sharing her struggles with mental health, the racial undertones of media coverage, and the isolation that accompanied her role as a senior royal. The expectations that Megan should intervene in Middleton's PR crisis not only trivializes her past experiences, but also places an unfair burden on her shoulders. It's a stark reminder of the double standards that continue to exist in society and in public life where women of color are disproportionately expected to exhibit grace and forgiveness in the face of adversity, often without receiving the same support in return. Moreover, this situation illuminates the in intricate dance of image management that defines the royal family, that defines how they interact with the public domain. A dance that Meghan and Harry 
have chosen to step away from. Seeking a life defined not by royal protocol, and we know they invented every protocol for Megan. There are, there are protocols coming out, out of Uranus that didn't exist before. Protocols coming out of Mars, Jupiter. But by the authentic, authenticity and agency they found lacking within the palace walls. So they left. Not only they left, you chased them out. They were ready to give up everything and say, okay. And you said no. In reflecting on this unfolding drama, it becomes clear that the insistence on Megan's involvement is not just a matter of royal etiquette or familiar solidarity. It is a reflection of a deeper societal bias that demands resilience and magnanimity from those who have historically been marginalized. It's a narrative that Megan, through her actions and words, challenges, advocating for a world where respect and understanding are not conditional on one's willingness to bear the burden of others. As the dusk settles on this latest royal saga at some point, the lesson may not lie in the specifics of the incident itself, but, but in our response to it. It's a moment to critically examine the expectations that are placed on women, minority women, women of color, and to consider the broader implications of our demands for their participation in narratives that do not serve the truth. In the end, perhaps it's, it's, it's not Megan who should be <laughs> offering any support, and it's not, but rather those who have watched from the sideline, who should be extending understanding and empathy towards her. Does Catherine not have a sister? Does Catherine not have a mother? Does Catherine not have a father? Does Catherine not have a husband? So, this request for Megan has got to stop. Megan owes none of you anything. May I help you recall that the now king, who has billions of pounds, said he didn't have money for Megan. Right? She doesn't owe any of you a thing. When she expressed that things were not going well, that it was affecting her mental health, what did you say? Huh. No, what did you say? So she's not obligated or has to or is going to come to anyone's rescue. Let me also allow me to refresh your memory. Remember when things were being written about Megan and they asked the palace 
to please say something and to make it stop? That it was racist, misogynist? Did they? Did you did you stop it? Uh, let me let me check my records. Did you? No, you didn't. But when there was rumors of something that Kate Middleton might have done or not done, whether it Botox here or Botox there, you were quick to say something. So when it was published that the Duke and the Duchess were leaving the hospital with their newborn prince, a chimpanzee. What did you do? Did you do anything? You did nothing. When Megan was accused of making the Holy Saint Mary of Kate Middleton cry in her fragility because that's what people of color do, you see. We just exist and we make you cry. We make you upset. We can't even talk about our pain. We can't talk about our ancestors that were brought to a continent and worked for hundreds of years in slavery. Oh, no, 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 we can't let your children learn about that. The fragility that exists. So you had no empathy, no sympathy, and you still have none. Just the mere request of asking the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, to do what? I don't speak for her, but I'm going to say that's a pass. That's a pass. It's a clear, clear pass. Because when someone let the media run and continue saying that Megan made her cry and she couldn't issue one statement and said, that is not true. And leave it at that. Megan launched her new entrepreneurial business at the time and on schedule that it was planned for. Megan is not taking up time in her life trying to figure out when the palace or those within it are going to have a mental crisis or disclose that they're still cheating or oh I might be pregnant or not oh it's not your child oh I've got a child older than George I don't know which one of those is true none of them might be true and if we go by what Spanish TV has said in magazine the princess actually might be in a coma so I don't know but the mere fact that you moronic, idiotic, unintelligent, lack of any analytical skills, living in an era, holding on so tight. But my friends, let me tell you something. There is a God. You may not believe that there is one, but there is a God. And if you don't believe there's a God, there is energy, there is the universe, there is the law of the universe. It all comes back to you. And it comes back four times, ten times. It all comes back to you. Stop asking the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, to 
to assist. She doesn't have the time. She's busy raising two healthy, wonderful children. I hope they're wonderful. I am very happy I know nothing because they're protecting their children's existence. And when they're ready to share anything, we will welcome it and say, oh great, thank you. So, she has a wonderful co-partner in her husband. They both are busy people. They have businesses, investments, they have shows to produce, people to hire, people to take care of, people, you know, speeches to, to, to be made. They meet with big organizations to move forward in things and laws, policies that are gonna be good for humanity. They don't they don't toss around things and say, I'm gonna be the solution for the Middle East. I'm gonna be the, the person who's gonna save the planet. I'm gonna be I, 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 I. Oh, shut up. Just shut up. And since I'm on this now rant, because, you know, now, now I'm ranting, to that woman that's on Celebrity, celebrity Big Brother in the UK and that other man who used to be on you know UK's Got Talent and, and you know I don't want to say their name I don't care to say their names really you know it's there's something mysterious about the two of you because that was the word you used about the Duchess She's just, just something mysterious about her. I know what you wanted to say, right? You wanted to say that, 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 yeah, yeah. Come on, say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it. You want to so badly. Say it so we can hear it. So you can't say, <laughs> you went down the alphabet and you were like, Okay, I'll use the word that starts with the M, not the other one that's right next to the M. So I'll say mysterious. She's just so mysterious. Oh, we met Catherine like once, but from far away. But she was just so beautiful and so kind. And so, look, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I'm not saying she wasn't. But do you see, do you see, do you hear yourself? You have not met this woman. You know nothing about her life, as a matter of fact. And you freaking, look, there's so many words I would like to use right now. But I kind of like my community and I kind of like my channel. Actually, I don't kind of like, I, I, I like, I love my, my channel, I love my community. And I'm not getting suspended or anything like that because of you freaking morons. I don't have much more to say other than I'm happy I cut that rant. Um, it was, and trust me, there, there is lots more that I go on saying or talking about. I guess I was really frustrated and wanted to get some stuff out, but it's not nothing you folks don't know already. So I decided to cut it right where I did because I want to get the Diana Awards in um, and I don't want it to be like a, a, a lot of extra time. Uh, so. With that said, let's just go straight to the Diana Award.
Just as good as they are for private educated people. Um, so the question. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. I wish I could be there with you guys. Sorry, carry on. Hey, Terry, um, I'm a huge fan of your mom and yourself. <laughs> 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 My name is Kira Zang. I'm from Indonesia. Um, I'm a teacher. 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 I'm a
what an inspiring, absolutely inspiring group of young people. I absolutely love how Prince Harry is so, he's just so natural, just so comfortable. Um, and the questions he asked him too was so engaging, absolutely engaging. And I love how excited they got, right? And all of them, and the, the, the one guy at the end who said, you know, this guy is just amazing, he's inspiring, just, just really, really great. So uh, on the next podcast, I'm actually going to um, stick a little bit with um, the Diana Legacy Awards. And for each one of the recipients, I'll just have a little, um, uh, a, a little sort of blurb on the work that they're, that they're actually doing. So next podcast, they will be in also. So I'm closing this podcast up. Thank you so much. Um, for hanging in there with, with me and I hope you found, uh, found it entertaining at the same time useful and um, hopefully you were able to get something out of today's podcast. As I wrap it up right now, I've been watching the news, I've been on the Twitter X birth um, and this whole thing about an announcement, BBC, it might be coming, might not be coming. It was a hoax or a hoax. It's a mistake or a mistake. I'm not sure. I s just saw a bunch of people on um, the platform saying that it seems like Kate Middleton's lawyers have been called. And someone is insinuating that, indeed, the worst has happened. Um, listen, I, I don't know. And... As I said at the beginning of this podcast, I really hope that she's okay. And whatever has happened, I just hope that they just come clean with it. And enough with the corruption, with the, with the police and all these other agencies and so on that just cover up everything like just just come come on and just say what happened okay with that i leave you with um actually i was thinking of leaving you with a video uh but i just changed my mind i think i want to leave with a more uplifting sort of maybe music or song or something. I was going to, there's a video that was done um, by one of the news, news, news channels, just given date by date about um, Catherine and where she was, her whereabouts and the questions and so on. I thought it was a very thorough and nice way how they put it all together. But I think I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to find some really uplifting or nice music and let's exit with that thank you so very much i appreciate each and every one of you thank you for being so supportive thank you for coming and hanging out and listening and commenting folks i know i say this all the time i love reading your comments love them love them love them and I just want to say one thing also before I leave, because I just remembered. Um, if at any time I make a comment, sorry, I, I respond to a comment or I'm adding my two senses to a comment or anything, please rest assured that I never and will never um, write something that is meant to be hurtful or meant to be a dig at you or anything like that. That's not where I come from. That's never my intention. Um, so if anything at any point is either misunderstood um, or you felt a certain way, please let me know. Um, because the last thing I would ever want to do is to unconsciously or by mistake or by being silly or something or trying to make a joke that I'm not very good at that I may offend someone or hurt them or anything like that you folks are important to me you are um, part of 
this community and this family. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of guy, right? Open. If something is bothering you, you say it. I, I'll, I'll tell you what I can do, what I can't. Um, but I think communication is always the best remedy for everything. And um, we put it and lay it all on the table. I appreciate you. I love you. And I am sending all of you the most amazing, big, warm hug and thoughts of wellness and peace. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now. One, two, one, two, need my attitude. Three, four, three, four, check my latitude. Top floor, top floor, that's what we're gonna do. Shrub move like whoop, down the avenue. Hey, I just want to find the things. I've been looking my whole life trying to find the things. I'ma drink the whole pie, that's mine. Like, if you want a slice, baby, you can try mine. Hey, give me, give me, give me. Give me all that good. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Do it like you should. Ooh, I like that. Then I love it Put some extra on the next one Got me hustling to the beat Fresher than I ever seen Hey, I just want the finer things I've been looking my whole life trying to find the things I'ma drink the whole pie, that's mine like If you want a slice, baby, you could try mine Hey, give me, give me, give me Give me all that good Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy Do it like you should, hey You know I don't even gotta ask I just want it all in the flash